I met my wife, Becky, in college at Central Missouri State University. They call it UCM now. Her good friend from high school was one of our wrestling managers. And so she introduced me to Becky. So we struck up a relationship and I thought it'd just be a, a, a friendship. But after about a year, we decided to take it to the next level. So I asked her for a hand in marriage. I talked to my parents, she talked to her parents. Her parents, they did not want to meet me. So we dated for a year and they refused to meet me. So now we're at Wednesday, August 6th, 1980, two days before the wedding. My then fiance is kind of a mess and here come her parents. So I look out the window that day, her parents walked up the sidewalk, her dad walked up to me and he shook my hand. And so he sat down right across from me and he read to me from 2 Corinthians 6.14, where it says, thou shalt not be unevenly yoked. And then he stopped. We all kind of looked around and I said, well, sir, that verse goes on a little farther to say, unevenly yoked in the spirit. And he got quiet and he got upset that I knew that. So he slams that Bible in my face. He says, son, you're wrong. He says, I'm not prejudiced. I ate with a colored guy once. Well, after her parents left uh, two days before the wedding, uh, we decided we would continue on. My family came, her, a lot of her family came as well. So we had a tremendous, enjoyable wedding, but just her parents refused to come and they would not allow her brother and sister to come as well. Our first Christmas as a married couple, Christmas of 1980, I thought, my goodness, it's Christmas. We need to go to your parents. So we headed down to Odessa out in the country and we got there and all the family was there, but her parents saw me walking up the stairs and her dad ran to the door and he stopped me. He said, oh no, boy, you go back out and sit in the car. The Martin Luther Kings, the Medgar Evers, the Fannie Lou Hamers of this world, they went to jail, got shot, got beat down. They got, all kinds of things happened to them. I'm just sitting out in a cold car. So it's not even worthy to compare as far as the sacrifice is concerned. So I sat there in a the car for an hour and a half and it's freezing out there and it's snowing. So, you know, I couldn't run the car the whole time, you know, so I'd run a little bit, then turn it off. And then I'd pray and then the tears. We did that for three years, uh, Christmas of 80, 81, 82. In 82, our daughter was born. So on that Christmas of 82, I took her out of the car seat and I had her in my arms. I said, now it's our third year and I've got a daughter. So I'll go up to the door and he said, the daughter can come in, but you can't. So I gave my daughter to my wife and then I went back to the car. And that was the last time I went down there as a family because my wife just couldn't take that anymore. So a total of 21 years come and go. Then in 01, you had the planes into the buildings in New York City, 9-11. That's a powerful time because uh, their pastor preached a sermon about going to your grave with bitterness in your heart. And that affected her dad. So in October of 01, he called me up for the first time in 21 years. So for about seven years, we did things like a normal family after that. We go down there for Christmas or Thanksgiving or just on the weekend. But I realized that her dad and I never did anything together. But eight years ago, he got sick, he got cancer, and he was in uh, St. Mary's Hospital in Blue Springs. And I was nervous about going to see him because he and I had never been together, just he and I, it was always all the family together. But I did one time, I went to see him in the hospital and I nervously walked up to his bed and I said, sir, I just wanna thank you for how you raised your daughter and what she means to our family and other families and the uh, impact for Christ that she's had. Three days later, he passed away. We just celebrated our 40th anniversary here this past August 8th. And in those 40 years, we've seen a lot come and go. And uh, one of the important factors, I think, in our, in our marriage is the fact of forgiveness, the forgiveness that comes in Christ. You know, Jesus talks about 70 times seven forgiveness. So through all the things we've dealt with from a family standpoint, you have to be able to forgive. Being able to do that has helped us to be able to have a tremendous marriage and three wonderful kids and seven tremendous grandkids. With all the things I've seen, the places I've been, without Christ in your life, it would be impossible to be able to forgive and to live a productive life.